summer is coming and we are baking in here. The crossover category in the country is being introduced with models left and right, which is great for you and I, especially those that are looking for a five-seater with a little bit more ride height that doesn't sacrifice too much of what a sedan can offer kind of a thing. For instance, the subcompact crossover category has quite literally like an oven that has been detached from its uh, gas, has blown up, really it's gone nuclear, uh, made evident on our page autodeal.com.ph and on our YouTube channel because the popularity of the race has, it's ridiculous. But that doesn't mean that the compact crossover category has fizzled out in any way. No, not at all. It's actually like an oven, but this time perfectly heated and making some very wonderful pies. You've got the likes of the Geely Ascara and then the ever popular Honda CRV. And then you've got the likes of the MG RX5, all that want a piece of that proverbial pie. This right here is the 2022 GAC GS4 crossover. It's the second generation GS4 crossover that the brand has brought into the country. And today we're gonna find out if it's got the looks and the goods to earn a piece of that pie. What is it with me and pies today? <laughs> help purchasing your car insurance? Head on over to autodeal.com.ph slash car dash insurance. Here, you can compare prices and customize your insurance coverage from many of the Philippines' top providers. When you've selected the insurance that's best for you, simply fill out the application and complete the transaction with ease through Visa, MasterCard, GCash, GrabPay, or PayPal, and receive your policy within the next business day. Get the best deal on insurance with AutoDeal. Price is obviously always going to be a very large factor when deciding to buy a vehicle of this type. And I can tell you that the GS4 comes in at 1,098,000 Philippine pesos. Now, Compared to its competitors that I mentioned earlier, it's smack dab right in the middle. The more affordable would be the MG RX5, and that comes in at about 40,000 Philippine pesos less. The GD Ascara comes in at a much more expensive price of over 1,600,000 Philippine pesos, but that comes with a mild hybrid system. Underneath this hood, of the GS4, it comes with a 1.5 liter turbocharged gasoline engine that sends power to the front wheels via a six-speed automatic transmission. And it produces 166 horses and 265 Newton meters of torque. Oh, that's hot. Changes that you will notice from the previous generation is that the headlamps are now a bit more sleeker and then they've got DRLs found up on top with LED high beams. Unfortunately, no fog lamps found down below, which I think would have been important in a car with a little bit more ride height. The grille you will notice is all new. It's actually much, much larger. Down the side, you are looking at 60 series tires on 17 inch wheels, which I think would have worked better if they were a little bit bigger. But then I got to thinking, the bigger the wheel, you'd cover more of the wheel well. And that, that space that you see there adds a lot to the character, giving you the confidence and saying that it's got much better ride height. So in that case, it may look a little small, but actually they work, as does the 190 millimeters down of, of clearance found down below. Down the side, you've got repeaters on the side mirror, a little bit of chrome around the windows, and of course, roof rails. On the body, you've got a line that stretches from the front all the way to the back. I like, actually like this line. And then it's got a little bit of a kink or a hump down by the end. It does not have a black roof, but it sort of mimics or gives the illusion rather of a floating roof line thanks to the B, C, and D pillars that are all in black. This actually might work on a lot more people because some people out there don't actually want a black roof simply because it attracts more heat. So you've got the best of both worlds here. 
Now at the back, it's really your average crossover rear. It's got sweeping lights from the side that come in and try to get as much of the vehicle as possible. It's got a nice chrome garnish up here, which is right above the logo. And then it's got reflectors down on either end. What I'm not a fan of are the four exhausts found left and right. I'm not a fan of them for one. And second, I feel it's a missed opportunity because the car does actually have twin exhausts because of the turbocharged engine. And I wish that, well, they would have made good use of that. It would have been a nice flex. Not necessary, but it would have been a nice flex. Um, when you open her up, you're looking at 450 liters of space, much more than a compact crossover, or rather a subcompact crossover, obviously. And if you'd like to see trunk spaces of subcompact crossovers, do check out our website and our uh, YouTube channel for the Comparo of our subcompact crossovers, which just actually came out. So anyway, back to the GS4. You've got 450 liters of space. Now, when you fold that, you're looking at over 1,400 liters of space, but you may have to compromise just ever so slightly because the seats don't exactly fold flat. But still, it's over 1,400 liters of space. And then, of course, underneath, you have your donut size spare, your tiny little Krispy Kreme, not a full-size Krispy Kreme. It's because Jack put me on a diet. You suck, Jack. The rear seats actually offer you a decent amount of space. To be honest with you, this is Jack's normal driving position and I've got about six inches of leg room, about roughly the same headroom, uh, with the seats up front kind of looking like an alien really with, with a cloak going on. It's actually quite unique. They are very comfortable. Three passengers shouldn't be an issue because there is no tunnel in the center. And in and, and, and this heat actually, the air here the air clean, I should certainly hope it's clean air. The air vents in the center will, is a welcome addition to anybody that's sitting in the center. But, but, to be honest with you, four passengers inside this automobile, two in the rear, would be okay. A fifth, although there is no tunnel, might be a tight squeeze because the elbow room is actually quite limited. You do have a few toys back here, the air vents that I mentioned down up front. Um, you've got bottle holders on either door and speakers as well and a center armrest with two cup holders. Now, I'm glad that there are air vents back here. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention, there are also two charging points found down below. I almost missed that, my apologies. Now, what was I saying? Ah, yes. Do forgive us, um, it is quite warm today, so we have the engine running, and you can probably hear that if I stop talking. And there you go. So the engine is running and the air is running uh, to be, for it to be a little bit more comfortable inside, which is actually much needed because it may not have a black roof, but it does have a panoramic sunroof. And if the lights and the windows that come in aren't enough, good grief, there's a lot, oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of light. It's nice to look at though. This must look great at night. But during the day, yeah, during uh, the uh, tropical summers that are coming up, Maybe perhaps best to close it. But hey, the leg room's actually pretty darn nifty. Yeah? I like that. It's nice. It's comfortable is what it is. I like it. Now, when you enter the cockpit of the GS4, the first thing that greets you is actually a very well-appointed, well-designed dashboard, really. It's got somewhat of a minimalistic design with soft plastics up here, soft touch plastics with contrast stitching up on top. And then the whole thing really is dominated by a large screen that's found in the center. And unfortunately, a lot of piano black plastics that are very, very scratchable here on the center console. That is not so nice. Now, moving on to your driving position, it's actually quite comfortable. Getting there might take a little bit longer than you're used to because while there is a telescopic steering, there are no power seats. It's a bit old school, so you gotta scooch down to get it. Speaking of old school, the instrument cluster. It may be because I got used to Chinese cars having all this LCD displays and whatnot. Here on this car, you've got two analog gauges that flank a digital chip computer in the center. So I was kind of expecting more, simply because it's a Chinese automobile. But then I realized that this is like its counterparts and its counterparts are actually Japanese. So that's actually a compliment if you think about it. An odd flex though is that it has a tire pressure uh, monitoring system, obviously for all four tires, but it doesn't measure it in the, ma in the manner that you and I are used to. Uh, it measures it in kilo, what is it again, Jack? Kilopascals. Kilopascals, which is, uh, it's there, but 
I guess it's kind of a weird flex. You've got buttons on your steering wheel that control your audio system, or rather your cruise and your audio system. And then in the center, you've got your variable uh, buttons that including your auto, uh, your, rather your eco, your auto hold, your parking brake, and oddly enough, a volume control knob, which is, you can control it anyway on the screen, but here, you can control, oh, we can't afford music. We gotta put that down. Your air controls are found down here with nice touch buttons, actually. They feel good to the touch. And then underneath that, you have your inputs for your uh, mobile phone, your charger, and of course, your 12 volt socket. No wireless charging pad here, but it does kind of look like it should have one. Now, speaking of the infotainment system, the GS4 comes with an 8-inch infotainment screen which doubles as your reverse camera, but it does need a little bit of help because it's not so clear. And it can also uh, act as your climate controls as well. Now, it's good news for those people that have iPhones because the head unit supports rather Apple CarPlay, but not so great for those with Android because it doesn't have that feature, which is kind of a bummer, but there is Bluetooth connectivity available. And in case you're ever wondering what kind of car you're driving, GAC loves to remind you. Folks, thanks very much for uh, supporting our channel by subscribing to it. If you guys are watching this video and haven't subscribed to our channel yet, do consider subscribing and liking our videos because like I've said it in the past, we love creating these videos just for you guys. Now, what I'm about to say is quite possibly be understood as an unpopular opinion at first. Yeah, but bear with me, I'll help you understand. Number one, suspension. The suspension of the GS4 is actually quite pleasant. It's uh, stable on the road. There is a little bit of body roll, but it leans towards more the stiffer side. So when you're going over potholes, uh, the larger ones do come back inside the cabin. NVH. NVH is basically just about par, really, at about 80 kilometers per hour and over rumble strips. It's quite quiet, really. On the highway, on, on more behaved roads, it's obviously very, very quiet. Anything softer than that, or rather anything slower than that, then yes, it's absolutely quiet as well. The transmission. That is actually pretty standard as well, pretty basic if you leave it in drive. There's somewhat of a lag if you were to put it in manual mode, but really more often than not, if you leave it in uh, drive, then you're good as gold. Fuel efficiency. Well, now that traffic is starting to build up inside the city again, as we are in right now, you're doing roughly about eight to 10 kilometers per liter inside city traffic. Uh, mixed conditions will give you about 13 kilometers per liter and then on the highway about 15 kilometers per liter so again just about average really okay maybe a small leg up because the other rivals are doing that with a three cylinder you've got a four cylinder underneath the bonnet which means you've got a little bit more of a smoother ride but essentially just average really but the thing is that's not necessarily a bad thing allow me to explain See, if you were to Google GAC, you're not exactly gonna go immediately to Guangzhou Automotive Group Company. No, you'll find some semiconductor stuff or, or whatnot. But more research will show you that GAC started just in 2007. So what I'm trying to get at, in a span of just 15 years, and this is not to put down all the other manufacturers out there that have spent decades upon decades perfecting their craft and making great products, but in those 15 years, GAC has been able to level with the rest of the market. Now, whether you see yourself buying a Chinese automobile in the near future or not, that is quite impressive. the day, the GAC GS4 presents itself as one of the more affordable compact crossovers available in our market. Now, it achieves this because, well, the technology found in the car is not exactly the creme de la creme top of the line. And the creature comforts inside the car, same banana. It's not exactly the top of the line creme de la creme of the line. But 
it does this because there are a lot of well, viewers out there and buyers as well, uh, prospective buyers, that know what it is that exactly what they want in an automobile and they're willing to sacrifice certain things, certain creature comforts, certain technologies, because they want it at a price package that they can definitely afford. So back to the reference that I said earlier at the beginning of this video, it's, it's like a pie, nothing too fancy and nothing too simple either. Just something that's just right that you can sink your teeth into and really, really enjoy. Again with the pie, I must be really hungry.